So we mentioned in the last video that catapults are pretty old, but I wonder if the Greeks and Romans had any idea how much STEM was at play behind their inventions. The first topic that we're going to discuss is energy transfer. Here at Sticks, we have a super simple definition of energy for you. We call energy the ability to do something. Simple enough, right? And there are all kinds of energies in the world. We have electrical energy, which powers our light bulbs. Thermal energy, which powers our power plants. And we will talk soon about what kind of energy is at stake in the catapult. What's neat about energy is it's always transferring from one form to another. If you've done the egg drop project with us, you learned how it started with potential energy and gained kinetic energy as it fell towards the ground. In the catapult example, it's a similar deal. As it's wound up, it creates what's called elastic potential energy from the rubber bands. When it's released, that elastic energy is transferred to kinetic energy, which the ball or projectile then takes to launch itself into the atmosphere. You want to challenge yourself to make that energy transfer as smooth as possible so no energy is wasted from other forms. The second topic we want to cover is called projectile motion. And these are the projectile motion equations on your screen right now, but don't let those intimidate you. There's only a few things that impact them and we're gonna sum them up for you right now. But it would probably be helpful if we told you what it is first. Projectile motion is when an object is launched or tossed into the air and it's subject only to the force of gravity. For example, a basketball player's shot, like we mentioned in the last video. A bad example would be an airplane because that's not just subject to gravity, it has engines helping it out. But back to it, essentially there are three items that impact an object's trajectory. The first is the initial force. For example, on this catapult, if we released it from back here, that large force would launch it much further than just a meager force like this. The second is the angle it's launched from. Let's pretend this binder is the ground. An object that's launched from this angle would look much different from an object launched at that angle. Third and finally is the object's height it was launched from. The flight pattern of a projectile that was launched from here would look much different from one that was launched a little bit higher. So do your best to play around with those three parameters and see which ones give you the best launch. But we will give you a quick hint. Can you pause this video and ask yourself which of these angles looks like the best flight and why it's better than some of those other angles? The last topic we want to talk about is accuracy and precision. We hear those words a lot, but did you know that they're actually different? Check out this clip. So after seeing that animation, can you spot what makes the two different? That's right, accuracy has to deal with how close the data is to the target, while precision has to deal with how close the data is to each other. Believe it or not, we want both in our catapults. We want them to launch near where we're aiming, and we want it to do it consistently. Well, we hope you learned something, friends, and we hope you're excited to get to building. We will see you in the next video where we show you some tips and examples to build your own. But first, check out just a little bit of vocabulary in case you got lost anywhere.